Have you ever wanted to apply a filter in a Mari No Graph and felt like you're just gonna break down and cry because it was so hard to achieve this? More about this and other cool features in the upcoming Mori 5 Open Beta. And also, there's gonna be a boxing match between Mori versus Mori, so stay tuned. So first up, we have the first version of a USD support in Mari. And I know it doesn't look so sexy, right? But as many VFX houses is adopting USD, this is a crucial step in the right direction. Let's have a look what that's all about. In the import assets menu here, let's take this walking teapot from Pixar. I mean, they invented USD, right? Okay, great. We now have our asset and uh, we can now actually here apply subdivision. It's going to pick up from the geo itself here and using here the object subdivide menu and this will apply open subdiv to the asset. Next up we also now got a new USD preview surface and to find this we can here go to the shaders tab and hit the plus sign next to the new surface. And as I already had a object here with a principal BRDF we can just go to my channels and hook them up here and see what we get with this new USD preview surface. The USD workflow in this initial release is geared towards geo import and preview for USD viewports like in Katana. To achieve this we can now also export the look out from Mori and we do this by using this USD assembly files and to support this new workflow we now have this USD tab added to export manager. It's gonna be interesting to see what this will do to my workflows. Let's have a boxing match in Mori. In the blue corner we have Mori 4.7 and in the red corner we have the contender Mori 5. And let's get ready to rumble! So Mori 5 comes with faster baking speed. And this feature was developed in collaboration with Weta. And I here duplicated an old asset a bunch of times. Looking here at the UV view, it contains 276 UDIM tiles. That's quite a lot actually. So I created here a cloud noise and I'm gonna bake this down using 4K bake points set to 16 bit. Participants get ready! Let's get ready to rumble! You can see here in the blue corner Mori 4 is chugging along. But here look at the might in the red corner. It looks like the rookie is going for a knockout. Here in the red corner we have the winner. And as we can see here, Mori 4 is still, yeah, it's just going. And uh, that's kind of annoying, right? Another Meshman approved feature implemented. Do you remember in the beginning I was talking about how frustrating it can be to apply procedural filters in Mori? And this feature is an old feature request of mine, so let's see if that solves this issue. We now have bake points filters added in Mori. And before this, you either had to export your textures out and post-process them, or by doing as I did, baking to paint in a destructive way and apply a filter later on. The downside by doing this post-process was as soon as you made a change, you had to remember the steps and reapply them. And this was a lot of overhead, to be honest. So now instead here, we can bake our paint down to a bake point. But as you now can see here, we have this filter tab added where we can add filters or stack filters. So if you change something upstream of this filter bake point, you can just rerun the bake point and the filter will reapply your settings for you. Take a quick look how this can be achieved. So we have here a cloud and I'm using a brightness look up here just to level this one. This bake point here, you can see here, I have baked it down and created a filter called a high pass to get this. And this filter here, I'm running through a, another brightness look up here. To get this like a non-linear workflow here, I'm inserting another brightness look up here after the original cloud here. I'm merging this in over the other one. So if I wanna uh, change the border here, I can just go here, change uh, this one here can start to tweak where this border is going to be. I want to have more or less of this, for example. And the beauty of this now here, if I now go here to my original cloud and uh, change something here, let's say that we want to change the size of this. If I now rerun this bake point here, it will reapply this. This technique was very difficult to achieve previously. 
in a non-destructive way. But now it's something we can do easily. Another Meshman approved feature. Thanks for this foundry. So Mori is all about painting, but it's funny. During the over 10 years I've been using Mori, nothing has changed in the paint engine really. Until now that is. Let's have a look. And here's a heavily requested feature from the community. And this would be to add jitter to brushes. Going in here to my paint tool settings, we can now find jitter per brush stroke or per tip here. We can now also add RGBA brush tips. And this is to paint with images. So this will be like uh, we can have an image or we can even have an RGBA displacement per brush tip. I'm just gonna import an image here and apply it to my brush here. And yeah, let's, it's a decal, but this could be like a skin texture or something as well. That's cool. It's gonna be interesting to see what this can do to my workflows. And now something that's close to my heart. A little love, tender and care for the node graph. Okay, so we start this by jumping into the node graph prefs. And under the node properties tab here, we can see, we can enable grid and snapping to the grid. And you can obviously also tweak the grid size and spacing as well as tweaking the grid background color if you like. Hey guys, if you want to see more Mori 5 content, give me a thumbs up on this video so I know about it. And here's another one. Something that I often find myself doing is to create gradients to control effects. And I always wanted a better way to do this. So we now have a new gradient nodes to help these situations. And we can see here camera distant gradient, object distant gradient, camera facing gradient, object facing gradient, and the two point gradient. Let's take a look here at the two point gradient. So I'm dropping down here my two point gradient and on to the object here, I'm creating two locators that I'm now gonna use inside this node here. And in these two locator fields here, I hook up these two locators. And then I can start to, to tweak them, the position, and uh, that's going to control where the gradient starts and ends. And this one is really handy for my procedural workflows. And to further enhance procedural workflows, Foundry also added Sin, Cos, Min and Max. And that's kind of max, right? So Mario 5 is now in open beta and there's also a 4.8 version and that's because they have different Python versions. And that's because some studios might have the difficulty to implement the newer Python version immediately. I have here a material using normal maps. And as you can see here, the rotation of the map is as its default. And the material kind of looks correct now in this example. But wait here, if I rotate uh, the bump map here or the normal map, what's gonna happen then? And as we can see here, it doesn't look correct, right? Now, if I check this button here, also, now we have the opportunity to control these effects as well. And for all you color nerds out there, Mori ships with OCIO 2.0. Oh, <laughs> isn't he cute? He's still baking. Mori 4.7. Never get up, never surrender. And oh, by the way, I'm gonna link here uh, in the corner here a Mori 5 playlist so you can check it out.